Hey everyone, and welcome back. So, I know it's been a long time since I last uploaded a video. And in the four years since, I mean, it's been a hiatus beyond hiatuses. Um, so this video is really going to be the getting the training wheels back and learning the ropes again for how to start doing YouTube videos now on a more regular schedule and getting back into everything. So what we're going to be building in this video is a 6040 kit, a CNC router that I bought off eBay. And so it's going to be basically, you know, mounting the motors, connecting the cables. As you can see, this machine is really 97% of the way done. So just to give a bit of background before jumping into it, the 6040 CNC is really one of the larger members of a family of CNC machines that are often bought on, you know, AliExpress or eBay or sources like that. They start generally with a 3020, they move to a 3040, and then up to a 6040. And these are basically bed measurements. So the 6040, as its name suggests, is a CNC router with a 60 by 40 centimeter table size. Um, that obviously being a bit larger than two foot by one foot. It fits a two foot by one foot sheet of plywood pretty comfortably. So that being said, let's walk through the components that come in the standard kit. You have three stepper motors plus mounting screws. You get a tool kit, a water pump for the water cooled spindle. This is about an 800 watt spindle. And then mine came with the additional rotary fourth axis. You can see here that it even comes with a little live center, plus the actual stock and chuck kit. Um, some kits don't come with a rotary axis. That's something you just have to look into. Plus, there's not to mention the, the control box. So as I said, everything from here is pretty much just wire it up, connect the cables, you know, do final prep, install the cooling pump, and other than that, you're pretty much good to go. So the only two tools you're really going to need for the next step is really just a screwdriver and or some sort of hex driver, plus a little Allen wrench for tightening up the lock screws on the stepper motor couplers. So that being said, if you have both of those, you're pretty much good to go. All right, so let's get started. Now, before we begin installing, what you're gonna notice is that each motor comes with a standoff that's used to access the coupler. So you can turn the set screw. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to orient the open face of the standoff such that, you know, it's facing in the direction that makes for the easiest install. Now for this, you're going to get the hang of it, but generally what I find is that the direction is pretty self-apparent. So that being said, let's get going. So now we have the final assembly and prep done, it's time for some final thoughts and general review and pros and cons of a machine like this. So probably the biggest pro is that you can get a fairly decent quality machine for extremely cheap. The 
numbered series, as I like to call them, the 30, 20, 30, 40, 60, 40, etc., are generally very well-built machines, and they'll last you a long time if you take care of them. Um, they can be had fairly cheap. This whole kit was under a grand. Um, cons? There's only really two things that I found during the assembly and during the prep and during, you know, all phases of this thing being here that I could quibble about. The first is that the rotary axis has no real hold downs. Now, this is, considering how well put together the rest of the kit is, this is strange. Because you tend to think you know, well, they could at least just give us four holes for, you know, T-screws and T-slots, considering we have this whole T-slotted table. So really with the fourth axis, it's kind of strange that we don't have a hold-down mechanism to really hold it onto the deck other than just, well, wait and or figure out how to do it yourself. I halfway joked to myself that it must be a test you know, prove that we got good at three axis stuff by forcing us to make them out for the four axis. Um, the other major gripe that I have is that this, and probably the biggest one, is that this machine has no sort of limit switches. Um, so basically, for the uninitiated, limit switches are on a CNC machine, basically little switches at either end of the travel on each axis. So, for example, for on the Z, there would be one up here, one down here. On the X or Y, there would be one here, one here, and then so forth. Basically, switches that allow the machine to figure out where its stop points are. That would prevent this whole gantry from running aground. And this machine really does not have that. And that's kind of baffling. When you see how well put together this machine is, how sturdy it is, I've got to look into the control panel of it, into the actual control box, and overall this is a very well put together kit, so that's why these few omissions are kind of unusual, and those are pr pretty much my only negative marks against what is o overall a very good, a good purchase. Um, but if you're on the fence about buying one of these things, if you're into woodworking or sheet metal work or engraving, or just want to develop a hobby, um, and you're interested in this kind of stuff, this is more than worth your time in buying. That's my final assessment. So just to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek of what's to come in the following days, um... <coughs> So just to give you guys a real quick sneak peek of what's to come in the next few days. Um, I'm going to do a video that's basically a review of all sorts of different control hardware. Um, 